All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews. And in this video, I'm going to introduce to you Tenshi no Harawata, or I'm going to translate it as Angel Guts by Ishii Takashi. Uh, this is from 1978 to 1979. And if you're not familiar with Ishii as far as his Gekiga uh, manga is concerned, you might know him as a film director of movies such as Gonin, the Beat Takashi movie from 1995, which later had, I think, two spin-offs or adaptations of it made, and a number of other movies. Um, also, Tenshi no Harawata was the characters in the movie in the manga itself was also adapted into a whole number of movies, most of which are classified as Roman porno or erotic films. So Thinking about that, you can imagine what kind of content we have in here. This is a Yakuza story full of sexual assault, murder, torture, rape. Um, if you don't think you can stomach that, then you probably do not want to watch this video. So that's my little trigger warning for you there. But the artwork is excellent. Ishii is very well known in the Gekiga circles and he is worth profiling. I've also bookmarked a bunch of pages here, but tried to avoid anything that's going to either get me kicked off YouTube or bum anyone out too much, all right? Um, incidentally, I also have Illumination. This is from 1980, which he put out right after Tenshi no Harawata. And uh, from this series, he really just gets into straight up short stories of violent assault, of course, on women. Um, I can't really show you much of this because it is very hardcore, but I can show you the intro, these first few color pages. So there we have the girl from the first story. It just says a collection of Ishii Takashi stories called Illumination. And in the opening scene here, we have a girl coming home from a work party at night, walking through a vacant field, vacant lot, and you can imagine what is going to happen next to some extent. So that is Illumination. This is from 1996. And I, I guess it's probably Marquis, but missing the E at the end is my assumption here. Um, this is a story about a regular salaryman with a teenage daughter and a wife who has a hobby. And his hobby is going out to his cabin in the woods. There's eight chapters in this. I can show you the cabin in the woods. Creepy cabin in the woods where he brutally assaults and murders women. Hmm. And there's the cabin, and there is one of the women. Can't really show you much of this one either, because except for maybe some of the boring scenes of him at his office, or him eating breakfast with his family. But I can show you what a psycho he looks like before he starts doing his killing. Most of the women he takes out are adult entertainment workers, but sometimes he gets the opportunity to find regular folk, regular ladies, to lure to his cabin. So that is Marquis, or Marque. I don't know. Um, wish I could show you more of that, but it's just too hardcore. All right, let's get into Tenshi no Harawata. Um, for, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to give you the background of it through Volume 1, go through a bunch of the scenes and the characters of Volume 1, and then I'm just going to show a couple panels from Volumes 2 and 3. That way I don't give away or spoil the story for those of you that want to read it in Japanese or find other means of reading it in whatever language you like to read in. So let's take a look at it. 
This is Meg, the protagonist's little sister. And even from the first scene here, remember I said this was adapted into a movie. Even from the first scene here, we see a movie poster in the background of the title of our manga here, Tenshi no Harawata, and it says now playing. So maybe he already had plans to make this or adapt this into a movie, or he just knew very well what he was going to do. And this is something else that uh, Ishii does a lot of, is he'll do take regular black and white photos and insert them into the manga and then sometimes draw over them. And here we have Toruko, or a Turkish bath, or, you know, brothel. And it's one of the main scenes or places of the story. Some guys hitting on Megu here. She's a 17-year-old high school student. And then we are introduced to her older brother, 22-year-old Tetsuro. Their parents are dead, which we will find out what happened to them later on in the story. But moving on to some more characters. Here we have the gang. This is Tetsuro, this is Kaji, Kajima, and this is Sadakuni. Um, they're friends since they were in high school, or maybe junior high school, so uh, that's kind of an integral part of the story. And they are a rape and robbery gang. They rob people by running them off the road. That two-page spread's pretty sick. He gets motorcycles so right. And after he runs them off the road, he steals their money and rapes the women. Savage. There's so much savagery in this series. Lots of motion in the panels too. It's crazy. So we're gonna skip all of the assaulty parts. Then we have one more main character to the story, besides all the other Yakuza members and other people that we meet along in the story, is here Tetsuro's riding his motorcycle, he's looking at a sexy sign, um, doesn't look in front of him, almost hits a high school girl with his motorcycle. Stops to see if she's okay. She's dropped her ID. And this is the introduction of Nami. Incidentally, his previous manga released in 1977 was called Nami. And her character reappears in a number of his films. I don't remember if the film name was Nami or if it was from Rouge from the early 80s. Uh, I haven't watched a lot of his films, to be honest. So, uh... Anyways, she's a reoccurring character that pops up in his manga and also in his films. Um, Tessido becomes so infatuated with her, of course him and his rape gang gotta do what they do. But she's a main character, one of the main characters throughout the story. So we have to see that introduction. Then after that brutal attack, then her father wants to get revenge by assaulting Megu, Tetsuro's little sister. Tetsuro is not having that, of course. And I don't want to give too much away. We'll skip ahead for a second here. And we hear a bit about the backstory of Nami and how her mother was brutally murdered. And then here we get the backstory of how Tetsuro, Kawashima, Tetsuro, and Megu, how their mother died, which was when she, when Meg was six years old, so that would have made Tetsuro about 11. Um, the mother walked onto the tracks with Meg. To commit suicide, Tetsuro sees this 
It's a wild scene. Goes to save them. Look at that big two page spread, it's pretty, pretty sick. This is in the original town of K Town, which we don't know where K Town is. It could be any town in Tokyo. Uh, I always imagine Kita Senju, that area, but it could be any case starting name. Um, but eventually ends up in Shinjuku. And he saves Meg, but cannot save his mother. Finally, at the end of Volume 1, so Tetsuro and Meg owe money to the Yakuza because his father before he died owed money to the Yakuza. So, of course, that burden goes on to your children. Um, he gets in a fight with the Yakuza member at a bar, outside of a bar, where he... Okay, we'll just flip through this fight scene really quick. Rock to the face. He gets stabbed and sliced in the arm by the Yakuza member. They always carry one of those little samurai daggers. There we have. The police were already looking for Tetsuro because it's a long story, but after his sister is attacked, Policemen try to stop him and he punches the policeman and just rides away on his motorcycle so the cops are out looking for him already. Still fighting the Yakuza members, sorry, I'm gonna get to it here. Then we have the man who always carries the knife, Sarakuni, comes in from behind and stabs the Yakuza member. Um, however, Tetsuro as Aniki, as the head who is already being sought out by police, takes, the, takes all of the, I wouldn't say takes the fall, but he takes responsibility for it all and at age 22 he is sent to prison for five years and that is where volume one ends here we have an essay by film director uh, Sone Namase I thought it would be uh, read differently than that but uh, nope I looked him up earlier and uh, that is volume one of Tenshi no Harawata let me just show you a couple panels from volumes two and three as well. The covers are good, right? So this is Tetsuro when he gets out of prison. So he'd be about 27 now. Grown ass man. I hope I bookmark some of the rain scenes. There's so many scenes in the rain that are just wild. Um, he does get a job, but it's as a bodyguard. First, kind of a, a, a guard for the brothel, and then a bodyguard for one of the Yakuza bosses. And eventually he finds his sister who is an enforcer for the Mafia. That's them squaring off right there. And then they realize who each other are. She's like, ah, Oni-chan, big brother. Wild, that's a great spread. More of 
these photos. There's Toturko, the Turkish bathhouse again. This is him working at the brothel. Yeah, those are pretty cool panels. I like those those top views of the shanty town. So that's some of volume two. And a couple things from volume three really quick. Yeah, this is, so he's murdered someone. You might be able to recognize who, but I kind of want to keep that a surprise for those of you who want to read this later. And he's burying the dead body in the rain. It's a crazy top view. Here, he has become bodyguard to one of the Yakuza bosses, and two men are coming to kill him. He stops them, chases one of them down, and it turns out to be his old friend Sadakuni. Sadakuni's crying. So, despite it being so violent, despite the characters being so hateable, you start to kind of like the connections that are formed between different characters. Big hugs for Aniki, for Tetsuro. I don't know, it's like that with a lot of the Japanese Yakuza movies as well, is they do, the characters do horrible things and then there'll be one sad scene at the end, which makes you kind of feel for the characters. I mean, think of, think of Sonachine, Beat Totakashi. Um, that, I mean, he's an awful person in that, but you start to kind of like him because of all the little goofy things he does and his weird attitude throughout the movie. And I love these scenes of him walking in the city. Here, the Yakuza are trying to abduct Nami. And Tetsuro happens to see it going down and intervenes. The action scenes are just great. Looks straight out of a movie, which is probably why he adapted this into a movie. So there he injures one and kills another Yakuza member, making him a double murderer at this point. And I'm not going to give, the way, give away the end of the story. I'll let you guys figure it out for yourselves one way or another. But that is Tenshi no Harawata and by Ishii Takashi. Wild stuff, guys. I wish I could have showed you more, but that's about all that's fit for YouTube. And thanks to everyone who subs, likes, and shares. I dig you all the most. It helps a lot if you sub, because then I can work my way up towards my goal of doing something a little bit different with this YouTube page. And um, if you have any comments about Ishii or any questions or anything else, pop them down below. And until next time, matane.